Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today I'm at the Connect IQ Summit just outside of Kansas City. Uh, and what I've got is a few new announcements that Garmin's made around Connect IQ and some of the partners. Uh, the first one, probably the most interesting, most exciting one from a user standpoint, is the ability to integrate with smart things devices. Uh, so basically those are smart home automation type devices that allow you to control pieces of your house uh, automatically, whether it be from the internet or in this case now from your watch. Uh, so for example, these two lights right here are controlled by smart things, as is the TV behind me. And and I can now control that with my Garmin wearable. Uh, and this actually comes to all Garmin devices, not necessarily just the latest ones, uh, as I'll talk about some of the new features in a moment, but in fact, the Garmin, uh, older Garmin wearables like the Phoenix 3, as well as the Phoenix 5, the 935, pretty much anything out there that supports Connect IQ now gets these smart things uh, support here. So what it allows me to do is to go ahead and pull up my routines from smart things itself. Uh, so that means that I can go ahead and pull those routines from the smart things website. And then using this app right here um, on my Garmin wearable, it'll connect to my phone using Garmin Connect Mobile, and then from there straight onto the internet uh, using cellular, Wi-Fi. Uh, but the watch itself is not actually talking directly to the lights. In fact, it's talking to that back-end service via the routines. So what it does, it exposes those routines you see right there. For example, good morning, uh, good night, goodbye, uh, movie time, anything that I've set up automatically or any of those routines I've set up on uh, the SmartThing site will show up here. You do not see individual lights. And the reason for that is that if you tried to enumerate all the lights in your home, for example, or all the outlets in your home, it'd be kind of messy on a wearable. So by doing routines, it's something that you can easily tap into. Okay, so for example, if I were to go into different routines right now, I've got good morning, goodbye, I'm back, good night, movie time. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the movie time, which will dim these lights right here. The TV is already on, so it's not gonna return on the TV. So you see as I do that right now, uh, the lights will start to dim. And there we go, the lights are dimmed. Uh, pretty straightforward. If I go now into the routines again, and I go back into good morning as if I was coming into the room, it'll do that as well. Turn on the lights up to full brightness, just like that. Pretty quick, it takes about one to three seconds for lag, which isn't too bad. Um, if I'm turning on the TV, for example, in this case, uh, it's gonna depend on what your TV is connected to. If it was connected to like a cable box that's always on, then it's gonna be pretty much instantaneous versus if it's something where you have to have another box to turn that on, it could be a little bit longer. Uh, to kind of wrap up on this smart things piece here, if I were to go back into it and go to the good night mode, it'll simply turn all this stuff off. So I'm gonna turn that on or hit that button and now it's gonna turn all three of these things off uh, just as you would expect. And this is something you would set up those routines within your house. So for example, you wanna turn off everything in the house as you leave, uh, goodbye, it'll do that for you automatically. So the next piece of today's announcement is four different Connect IQ updates. These Connect IQ updates are coming to Garmin's newer wearable devices. So for example, the Phoenix 5, the 935, uh, Kronos, and the 735 XT from last year, basically things that support the latest version of Connect IQ. Uh, the first one is the always active watch faces. So one of the big complaints in the past with third party watch faces, you did not get second by second data, in particular the second hand. So if you were one of those folks that wanted to see uh, the seconds on your watch face, you couldn't do that historically for a third party watch face, only Garmin's own watch faces. Now that's supported. You can also pull other data into that as well so that that data is continuously being updated uh, in a way that's low power friendly, uh, which is one of the main things to keep in mind. It's one thing to have a watch face that updates all the time. It's another thing to ensure that watch face isn't killing your battery on your device. So for a unit like a Garmin or a Suunto or a Polar where you're trying to do a long battery life in that standby mode, it's really important that that app isn't just destroying that battery life. The second piece of that announcement is the new background services. Uh, so this is sort of like multifunction or multitasking for watches, um, which is really one of the first times we've seen this on other apps. Uh, certainly you have that kind of theory on other platforms, but certainly not on the Garmin side of things. This allows apps to run in the background or be triggered automatically uh, to show up within the uh, watch experience. So for example, you could have an app that automatically shows your Strava totals on a timer basis, or you could have nutrition alerts that show up automatically. Um, all that stuff can happen automatically, which is kind of cool and happen in the background of other apps. And then from there you can trigger different actions to occur. So an app can stay in the background and then trigger something to pop up and say, hey, open up this app to complete that transaction. Next, we've got trial apps. Now, one of the criticisms of the Connect IQ platform in the past has been the lack of ability to monetize it. Um, sure, there was always ways to do that sort of behind the scenes. For example, Exert's done that, uh, where they have their platform, uh, their smart um, workouts app, but you had to use their service in order to take advantage of the smart workouts app, um, which meant that you were paying for that service, again, behind the scenes, uh, but it wasn't a way to do that sort of in front of the consumer. In other words, if you wanted to buy an app like you might on an Apple or a uh, Android device, you could not do that 
that on the wearable itself. Um, now you still can't do that either, but now what they've done is a way to trial apps. So the ability to do a trial of an application and have that third party authorize you as being paid effectively um, is a way to go ahead and kind of be that middle ground. And the reason that companies like Garmin want to shy away from the whole monetization app so much, it isn't so much that they want to bypass the ability uh, for you to buy things, is that most companies don't want to deal with the payment processing and the payment side of an app platform store. So this essentially offloads it to a third party where they can go ahead now and authorize that transaction from that third party uh, back to your watch and your watch is then authorized to use that particular app. Uh, so it's kind of a middle ground and I think it should work pretty well and hopefully open up the door to more apps that want to do something on this platform but not necessarily want to do it for free. Last but not least, we have action intelligence. What this is, it goes gives much higher fidelity data um, from the accelerometer in the watch itself. Uh, so in the past, you couldn't really use that that accelerometer data very deeply. Uh, now you can go ahead and use that data, you can record that data, and you can also base or trigger actions and portions of the app from that data. Uh, so for example, there's a pitch counter app, a demo they have where they can go ahead and you can practice throwing a baseball, uh, and that'll then count the number of pitches that you have on the watch itself, useful for a, a baseball pitcher that wants to track how many pitches they have in a game. And there are many other uses along the way um, from accelerometer data, that's just sort of the starting point. Uh, we're seeing other companies as well start to dig into this. Uh, we've seen this, for example, on the Apple Watch, digging into accelerometer accelerometer data on how to leverage that at a much higher sampling frequency uh, than you might have just with kind of very basic simplistic data. So with that, all four of those last four features right there do require, as I mentioned earlier, the newer Garmin wearables. Uh, so things like, again, the Phoenix 5 or the 935, because they are supporting uh, that new Connect IQ version, which is the platform, again, that is the development side of things. And that's, you know, certainly there's gonna be complaints out there about why doesn't, for example, the Phoenix 3 or the 3HR support those. Uh, and, you know, from talking to Garmin, it sounds like a lot of that is simply hardware limitations on the devices themselves. They've reached the end of the road in terms of what they can squeeze in uh, from a capacity standpoint and a processing standpoint on those older watches. I think going forward, and this is something I, I chat with them about, is how do they prevent that sort of scenario like happened with the Phoenix 3 and 3HR of running out of kind of dev um, SDK support earlier than they wanted to in the 5 and going forward line. And it sounds like they've done some of that work so that hopefully these platforms like the 5 and the 935 will be able to last more years for new development features than older watches. Uh, but certainly time will tell. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and like that like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Also check out the link in the bottom of the description field there for more information on all these different things here. I've dug into that in the full post itself which talks about uh, each one of these features in a bit more depth from a uh, technology and developer standpoint. Have a good one.